Hello and welcome to the GSK Science in the Summer Be a Chemist activity. If you have signed up for this activity, then you are going to be pretending like you work for a toy company and you're going to create a new kind of toy. It may be similar to slime. Have you heard of slime? Okay. What is a materials chemist? Well, you should have all received a lab notebook with stickers. My name is Miss Heather. I work for Cyport Discovery Center and I'm here to help guide you through the Be a Chemist program. It was written by the scientists and educators at the Franklin Institute, a museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Fantastic place if you ever get a chance to go there and sponsored by GSK. All right, so if you turn to page 13, a materials chemist studies and creates new materials to do different things. A materials chemist might work to make unbreakable glass for phone screens. Mm -hmm or a waterproof fabric for keeping backpacks dry inside. That's what material chemists do. Here's a picture of one working in the lab. Okay. And then for our experiment, we'll turn to pages four and five in the lab notebook. You should have also received an activity guide. This was designed by our friends at the Franklin Institute to help you do your experiments at home. Okay. And um, there are some links to some introductory videos about the Biochemist program and about how to set up your lab and safety as well as a specific video on Be a Chemist. This is a live interactive session. You can join anytime. And if you didn't get a chance to join, we'll have a recording of this available for you next time. So first safety. There's some safety things that we need to keep in mind in the lab. In your materials chemist activity guide, the safety guidelines are listed right here. Number one, don't touch your face or your eyes when you're doing an experiment. Some of these materials, such as borax, could irritate your skin or eyes. Wash your hands with soap and water when you finish. The glue obviously is going to be pretty messy. And as you know, when you work with slime, it gets messy. And don't taste the materials for any reason. We don't eat or taste or drink anything in the laboratory. Not unless you've been told to, and that's a particular special kind of lab, like a food chemistry lab, but otherwise, no. Okay. So for, uh, like I said, your, your learning goal is that, um, your job is to create a stretchy, slimy material and recommend a new formula for creating a new toy. So this is not just a cookbook recipe for how to create slime. If you look on page four and five, you're given some basic instructions, but then you get to try different combinations to continue to improve. Some people would call this the engineering design process. All right. So for the lab prep, what is in your backpack? You should have received the backpack that contains a bag with the basic materials that you need from your kitchen, you pr will probably need to get some water. You will need water. It doesn't have to be in a 
special container like this, but you will need water to work with. Most everything else came in your kit. Glue. This is just regular old school glue. It came with some paper cups for mixing, cornstarch, the borax, some wooden craft sticks. These are called pipettes and we're gonna practice how to use them in just a second, okay? A couple of plastic spoons. Some of your kits may have come with a rubber band. It's actually a rubber band that's stretchy. So this is an example of a stretchy material. And food colors. We bought them in bulk and just put them into these little containers. So you've got R for red, B for blue, Y for yellow. I know it doesn't really look yellow, but it's because it's very concentrated. It will be yellow, okay? What other colors can you get besides red, blue, and yellow if you mix some of these? Do you know how to make green? How about blue and yellow? Does that make green? Anybody know how to make purple? Whose favorite color is purple? Should be. What happens if you mix red and yellow? You get orange. Okay. What are the food colors for? They're optional. Oh, you wanna make your slime or your new toy. Maybe it's better than slime. A certain color or combinations of colors. Very good. Okay. So we're going to practice using a pipette. Sometimes it's hard to see. So this time I'm going to show you using colored water. So here's just water in a paper cup. Let's add some food color to it. Oh, these are kind of hard to open, aren't they? Okay, just a few drops. Whoo, very blue. Okay, I'm gonna stir it up. You can see it's blue. Okay, so this is your practice using your pipette. Lots of laboratories use these from chemical labs, bio, medical labs, you know, medical research labs. And so you squeeze the bulb. So you're squeezing the air out of this bulb. It's kind of like an eyedropper. So squeeze the bulb, then put it in the liquid. Then let go of the bulb while it's still in the liquid. See it going up? Ha ha. Now how do you get it out? You squeeze the bulb again. Depending on how fast you squeeze the bulb, it will drip out or even kind of squish out and you can squish it a couple more times, okay? So that is how you pipette. Let's practice it again. Squeeze bulb, go under the liquid, release, let go of the bulb, and we have our liquid in the pipette. Now let's drip it out. Can you drip one drop at a time? Good. Okay. Did you notice you can feel or even see that there are some things written on this, uh, imprinted? These are numbers and it's one milliliter. That's a half, two milliliters, two and a half, and three milliliters. I like to measure things. So this would be one milliliter. This is two milliliters. And if I can squeeze it well enough, ah, right there, that's three milliliters. Now, why don't you squeeze 
the bulb when it's in the liquid. I'll show you why. It bubbles. Did you see that? The bubbles. The other thing is that you won't, later on, if you use fancier pipettes, you won't get an accurate measurement. When we get a full pipette full, it's three milliliters. But if you squeeze it first in the liquid and then let go, notice that you get more. See, you get more than three milliliters. So don't do that, don't do that. Don't, don't squeeze it under the liquid. It bubbles and you don't get the desired amount. Okay, I'm going to set this aside now that we've practiced. The next thing we need to do is mix up a borax solution. What is a solution? Well, we have granules of borax. It's not really a powder, it's, it's kind of granular, okay? Um, we need it in a liquid form so that we can measure out with a pipette or a spoon. Okay, so where does it say on your activity guide? It says so right here. Number five, prepare your borax mixture. Add one spoonful of borax to one half cup of warm water. I don't have a half cup, I have this cup. We're just going to do our best. Maybe I'll use less than a full spoonful. I also don't think this water is very warm. So I don't think the borax will dissolve as well as it could. Borax does dissolve better in warm water. Okay, here's my spoonful. And if you need to practice the spoon and remember, don't eat anything and keep this away from cats, dogs, little brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, okay? Put it in the cup of water. Okay, zip this back up so it doesn't spill by mistake. And now we're going to stir it. Maybe I shouldn't have filled it so full. It's gonna make a mess. That's why I have this tray here. But if you don't have a tray, you could try newspapers, junk mail, <laughs> an old towel, something like that. Okay, so we're mixing up our borax. It's kind of whitish. It's not real clear, okay. There's our borax mixture. Now we're gonna let that sit and dissolve just a little bit while I show you some materials that other toy companies have made. Okay. Have you seen the sticky frog? Who likes the sticky frog? You play at Chuck E. Cheese and get enough tickets to get a sticky frog? The sticky frogs are pretty fun. I, I like these. My kids like these too. And if they get dirty, what do you do? You just rinse them off. Okay, it stretches and it sticks to things. <laughs> kind of fun, right? Okay. What else do we have here? Ooh, silly buddy. I believe silly putty was invented by mistake. That's what I heard. And they invented it and then, whoa, it turned out to be a pretty cool toy. You ever played with silly putty? I'm sorry I couldn't send you with all of these in your kits, but you can find them at most general stores. Okay, so it stretches, but if you pull too hard, it breaks. Whoops. But it'll go back to its shape. So that's silly putty. Okay. What about this one? It says fluffy slime. What do you think makes it fluffy? What is fluffy slime? It doesn't smell bad. Whoa, it's like a big marshmallow slime. It's kind of slimy. I don't think your 
oh, I don't think your family would appreciate it if you left this in the carpet. Mm -mm, no, definitely not. Ooh, but it, it ooh, wow. Ha. Okay, so hopefully you'll get to play with some fluffy slime sometime. How do you get it off your fingers? Do you just dab it like, okay. So what we're doing is we're seeing what's been made already because when you invent something, it's not an invention if somebody's already invented it, okay? So you have to know what's been invented already. Remember, you're working for a toy company, okay? So you have to study what's been made already. Paper towel. Wipe our hands. Okay. How about Neptune? Age three and up. Wow. This looks interesting. Do you know what to do with it? It looks rather liquidy. Does it open? I'm going to leave this one and GAC super stretch from Nickelodeon. Okay. So it's got a label. It's got this plastic in it. More plastic. Okay. First of all, I noticed that it's cold. It's it's cold like the room in here. It's fluffy. Can we stretch it really big? Wow. Do you think you can make something like this? Let's try. Now it's your turn. What do you think you can make? All right, so what's the first thing we do? We're gonna do some research. We did our research on things that are out there. Now we're going to use the slide formula on page four of your lab notebook. Here is page four of our lab notebook. We'll make our slime sample. A spoonful of glue and a spoonful of water, mix well, add one pipette full of borax solution, mix again. What can we mix with? One of these? Okay. So we'll get a new cup. This is going to be test one. I'll put a one on here. And in my lab notebook, I'm writing a one right there. Okay. So one spoon of water. Is that right? One spoon of glue, one spoon of water. Maybe we add the water first. I have to tip this to get a full spoon. I think the glue will spoon out. Spoon of glue. Oh, spoon nicely. Here we go. Okay, and then we'll mix with our wooden stick and add one pipette full of borax. Squeeze. Draw up. Three milliliters. Ooh, okay. Put that in there. What does borax do? Let's find out. It thickens it. Look at that. Okay. We'll stir, stir. We're going to keep stirring until it gets kind of stiff. Oh, wow. Okay. Not all of it does. Some of it's still liquid in the cup. 
I'm not going to worry about that. Just keep stirring. Okay. Do you think it's thick enough to pick up with my hands? Or should I stir it a little bit more? Now, if you have a borax sensitivity, if you get a rash, if you touch borax, you should wear gloves. You can use kitchen gloves or vinyl gloves. Otherwise, it's just messy. Okay. Stretch it with my hands. Okay. Not as good as the GAC. Okay. Now what do we do? Wipe with a paper towel. Okay. We make observations and that's actually something for your stickers, making observations. Okay. Well, those are your skill stickers. So we can write in our notebook. We did one spoon glue, one spoon water, one pipette, borax. Slime result. How far did it stretch? About that far? So about mm, a finger length. Stretch a finger length and it's still pretty wet. Okay. And lumpy and wet and lumpy. Can we make this any better? Okay, what one thing do you think you could do to make it closer to, oh, whatever you want it to be like? Let's make a second batch. So number two, how are we gonna make number two better than number one? Well, we could add color, sure. But is that gonna make the slime or the stuff stretch any better? No, probably not, but it's okay to add color. Um, hmm. How about, what do you think? More borax? Okay, one spoon of water. One spoon of glue. How much borax? You choose. We had one pipette full, you wanna to try two? Okay. When should we put the um, color in? Do you wanna do color now or next time? You say next time, don't change everything at once. Good idea, okay. So we're just stirring now. Okay. One, X, two more. Okay, and we stir. Do you think it's gonna make it any better? I don't know. Keep stirring, keep stirring. It looks like it has more bubbles in it. stuck to the wooden stick. You think I can pick it up? Okay. Hmm. I don't think it helped all that much. What do you think? Okay, maybe a little bit longer, but not much. What would happen if we added color to it now? 
Do you think it would mix very well? Think about that while I write down my notes. Number two, one spoon glue, one spoon water, two pipette borax. It's hmm, maybe two finger length stretch. Let's stretch more, okay. But it still feels like it would kind of break. It's still lumpy. So do you want to add um, any color to it? Red? Okay, we'll add some red to it. But I don't know, what do you think is going to happen if we put red in it? Because it's already a lump. Do you think it'll mix? Maybe it'd be easier if you had the red mixed with the water first. I don't know. I think that's probably true. It's, it's kind of messy and it doesn't look pretty now. Okay, so we learned that adding food color to the mixture does not work after the borax has been added. Okay, what else do we have here? Cornstarch. Have you ever used cornstarch when you make slime? Well, let's try. If you haven't, let's find out what might happen. Okay, so that's experiment three. I had a spoon. A spoonful of water. Let's add the corn starch now. Okay, you want to add a spoonful? Okay, a spoonful of corn starch. Better mix it with the stick. Close this so it doesn't spill. It's, it's really lumpy. Oh, this is like oobleck. Okay, you ever made oobleck? Now let's add the glue. One. Do you think it needs more glue? That's almost like a full part of cornstarch and glue. You can try anything you want. Whatever creativity you want, just write it down so you'll know when you find out what worked. Okay, I'm just gonna start with one spoon of glue and now I'll add, well, you want some color. I'm gonna make it blue. I don't think the color really affects the way that it stretches, so I like blue. Oops, that was two drops. It's gonna be very blue. What? You say you want it kind of teal? Okay. Maybe a little bit of yellow in there? Just a little? Okay, just a little yellow. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Okay. It mixes. Mixes nicely. Ooh, okay, now we know what happens when we add borax. It firms up. So here's our borax. It's one pipette full. Stir it. Wow, it's behaving quite differently than it did before. It's actually, wow. What do you think? That kind of fun? Okay, squish it in the hands. Are you having fun? Okay. Now, is this more like GAC? Almost. Oh, it tore. What do you think we can do to make this better? I think this is the best so far. What do you think? Okay. 
better wipe off, write that down. This is a messy lab. Okay, we have one spoon water, one spoon blue, three drops blue, one drop yellow, that was just for pretty, and then one pipette borax. And it stretched wide like GAC, but broke. So we need to improve our toy. Now we have number four. Did you like the color? I did too. Maybe we make number four a slightly different color though, so that we know that um, something different. What color do you wanna make it? Maybe more of a green? Okay. So number four, let's do a spoon of water. That helps the, we're gonna use the cornstarch again. One spoon of water. One spoon of cornstarch. Wooden stick and stir. Stick like oobleck. We're going to do two spoonful of glue instead of one like last time. One, two. Oh, I know we could make purple. You want to make purple? Okay, let's stir this up. How did I say purple is made? Probably red and blue. So we're gonna try two drops of blue. Mm. One drop of red at first. Let's see what that makes. Oh, that's dark. It's a different shade than the other blue. God, it's just a much darker blue, like a midnight blue. Hmm. Do you want to add any more red to it just to see what it'll do? Okay, let's add a little bit more red. Sometimes when I mix paints, the colors don't come out looking all that great either. So <laughs> you have to be careful. Ah, I'm gonna add a little more blue. I liked the blue better when it was blue. Okay. That's better. Okay, okay, okay. We've got the cornstarch in there. Everything's ready for um, our borax. One pipette of borax. Okay, what else could we do in the next experiment if we have one pipette of borax in this experiment? Mm -hmm. That's right, we could have one more pipette of borax. That'd be a fifth experiment. You'll have to let me know if you wanna try that. You say, why not? Why not? Um, I'm seeing, oof air bubbles come up. That's interesting. Okay, stir, stir. It's, 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 it's messy. It's, you know what, I really think it needs more borax because it's, it's really gooey, messy. I'm going to just add the borax to this. So this was an impromptu Change. Try this again. Oh, my cup is pretty full. It's, it's oh, very messy. I 
That's really bubbly. So we are testing. That's another skill sticker tested. And you can put those skill stickers in your notebook as you go. Can we get it all out? Okay, let's try. Well, number one, it sticks to the wooden craft stick. Can I make a ball like a rubber bouncy ball with it? No, it's, it's too wet and it sticks. What if I keep rubbing it? What if I put cornstarch in my hands so that it doesn't stick to my hands? Now, if you are allergic to corn, don't do this. Hmm. Well, that keeps it from sticking to me. It, it feels quite firm. It, it doesn't look like any of the other toys. Do you think it could bounce? It bounces. That's pretty cool. Of course, don't let anybody eat it. It's, it's not to be eaten. Well, there you go, folks. I think we have our optimum toy, but we need to write down what we did. So we had one spoon of water, two spoons of glue, two spoons of uh, two pipettes of borax, a spoon of cornstarch. We had about six drops of blue and four drops of red. And we had cornstarch in our hand and we rolled it. And I'm gonna put four down there in the best formula and I'm going to say that it made a bouncy ball. I need a little more cornstarch in the hand just to keep it looking good, but that's mine. Now, what do you think your toy? How, how did your toy come out? Did you, did you make your own? Okay. Okay. Is a material chemist something that you're interested in doing? Well, let's see. Well, what, what, okay, what kind of stretchy toy do you think this materials chemist made? GAC? It's kind of like GAC. What are these? Are these some science tools in the lab? And what's he wearing? Eye protection, gloves. Lab coat, good. Um, what do you think a materials chemist might do all day at their job in the lab? You think they get to test a lot of things like this? Yes. Writing it down, giving a report, maybe talking to other people in the lab and then having a team meeting with the, toy, the other toy makers. Maybe he's making one toy and somebody else is making another toy. So that is the end of our broadcast today. If you didn't get to join us, we will have a recording available for you and I'll be making a new recording next week if necessary. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.